Well, I mean, it was my birthday yesterday. So why the hell would I want to cover her bullshit return to Kuwait? <laughs> Can't even. All right, so Milk Tea's got some cover. Like, there's a lot of people who have coverage of this. But I haven't covered Milk Tea in a while. So. Can't even with you guys. I mean, I've never, look, I've been manipulated by men before. In fact, I even had my own blowout last night on Facebook about how I've been manipulated by the dude I was with. Um, and by the way, I got several threatening texts this morning about that post. Um, telling me I need to take him down, um, and that one of our mutual close friends agrees with him that, um, I shouldn't have done that. Oh, dumbass. Do you not know that I have his phone number? <laughs> he fucking called him immediately, and I'm, I'm like... What, uh, he's invoking your name. Like, <laughs> what did you say to him? Um, so we already had a conversation this morning. And, uh, Joe, you can go fuck yourself. <laughs> Good luck with your assembly run. Good luck with your assembly run. Okay. So. <laughs> can't even, you guys. Um, Yes. Men and women get manipulated by their partners all the time. That's why I think we enjoy watching this drama from other people who have what appear to be in our eyes even more outrageous than what we ourselves are experiencing. But I'll tell you straight up, when it comes to me, if I'm experiencing something that is fucking outrageous and um, the person is telling me to, hey, but keep it quiet, like we got to keep this on the down low, uh, there will be a point of time after so much verbal and emo emotional abuse that I will come clean and fucking go live with your bullshit. And um, I can't wait to see that happen between Chantel and uh, Salah. Because you know it will. Cubs, what's brewing? Welcome back to the channel. Pleasure to have you here. We had a little bit of a break there. Um, last week we had some pretty severe weather stuff going on. I'm sure you've seen, well, I'm not sure you've seen, but I know it was covered in the media, the floods that were going on in Dubai and then yeah. the flooding over Oman was also pretty serious. We were quite fortunate in my particular area, but uh, we did have some quite large flooding nearby. So... And I think this flooding was actually from cloud seeding. It was actually sort of a man-made problem. Um, but I don't know. Uh, maybe, I don't know that she's actually going to get into this. Uh, it was messing up school quite a lot because obviously students travel in. So, you know, it impacts what we can do. So things were up in the air a lot. We were doing a lot of extra work trying to get things sorted and get lessons covered and stuff. And um, then I just... <laughs> Got back to full-time work, got back to regular schedule. Me and all the other teachers were just, like, crawling through the week, getting back to full-time. We suddenly feel like, even though I knew the end of year was coming, because this year has gone so fast, all of the stuff required for end of year kind of blindsided me. I felt like we shouldn't be this far on in the term. So I feel as tired as an end-of-academic-year teacher tends to feel, even though the year also seems to have gone pretty fast, which is an odd job. Wow, it's like fucking April still. Oh my god. What has happened to the school years? I mean, when I was a kid, 
Uh, we went to school all the way through the end of June, and now, like, everybody's getting out so early. I, I, I just don't, I don't get the school schedules anymore. They get way more time off than we did as kids, and, um, they, they do start earlier, but they end much earlier than we did as kids it seems like they get more vacation time than we did they get more summer they get more winter they get more snow break they get more spring break they get more winter fest or like uh fall fest break whatever the fuck it is but they're getting tons of time off compared to what um Gen X d dealt with. I, I just, I, I, I don't understand the school schedule. Okay, I'm just like ranting now. I digress. It's the position of emotions. On top of that, Foodie has been irregular in that very special way she is. And uh, her content hasn't really been much to cover. <laughs> I love your double entendre. <laughs> it's so good. She's been irregular in that special way she is. <laughs> well, you know, she she does experience incontinence. <laughs> yeah. That's so good, Milk Tea. Oh, my God. I don't actually think there's very much in here, but it's a small vlog, and uh, at the very least, it's an easy way to get back into the swing of things, because every time I thought, okay, I'll sit down and do a react, it was a lot of B footage, the lives didn't really have anything to hang your hat on, I was just like, eh, it's not worth it. But, we're here, we're back, Chantel is apparently back in Kuwait, so we're looking at the I Traveled 20 Hours from Canada to Kuwait vlog, and uh, it will at least get us started and be back into the reacting mood. So let's get going. Hi guys. So uh -huh. this little vlog is a mix of content of sorts. Uh, First up uh, in this episode are clips from time spent with... Yeah, because she likes to mix up the timeline for us so that we never know when things actually happen. Okay. All right, Chantel. Let's go in this episode of the show she's producing family such as what i ate and did with them while in canada just a few clips i know i ate out a lot but i also did have quite a few home cooked meals and what i will show you are just some of them so it will look like more food obsession but it's just clips from meals from different days in this it is food obsession it's fine but it's food obsession because when she says i'm spending time with my family we don't actually see her family now i'm sure that's on purpose they do seem to have been a lot stricter this time around in terms yeah i get you the thing is like um generally when you spend time with family not everything you're doing is eating maybe you're playing board games or card games or you're um, going walking through a park or you're, you know, d going on adventures together. But to be like, this is my entire experience with my family is eating. Come on, Chantel. Keep up your therapy appointments and, and stop this goddamn obsession because you're going to fucking kill yourself. Of, you may not show certain things which is probably why she's releasing this stuff now but they just don't want anything to do with the channel at this point i would guess i was also a little confused as to why she put this segment on the beginning because why would you describe the clips that are about to come if you can just show the clips that are about to come and voice over as they go and mm -hmm. then i looked at the timing of this video which is eight minutes and 38 seconds mm -hmm. and i calculated okay the B-roll footage plus the cameo hawk plus the um, plus the intro gets her over eight minutes. Now I have YouTube Premium, but if anyone out there doesn't, feel free to tell me how many ads she had in the uh, in the video because you can only put mid-rolls in after a certain point. Particular case. So I hope you enjoy this video. 
I know you guys like when I share things like this. And for those of you who don't, that's okay too. Don't think anyone needed your permission to not like it there. Oh, that's okay too. All right then. <laughs> Hopefully something will come up that you like. <laughs> Even though she's so not saying anything different. This vlog will contain a few clips from my trip home. I will do a whole long and super thorough story time, though, about this trip. When she says a story time, I'm assuming that means she doesn't have any more clips. Like, having clips of her actually doing the journey would get her a lot more views. Like, people want to see it, even if it's not uh, the most interesting, it's also not the most dull. So to say, oh, I'm going to do a story time, did something happen? You didn't record anything. I'm guessing the trip was very difficult because she didn't book herself a second seat. But who am I to know? One of well, and on top of it, we're talking about 20 hours rather than 13. I'm sure that she has a lot of complaint stories of a 20 hour trip. But she's like, oh, I'm going to have a story time later. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. These days. I just need to get reorganized over here. So yes, I'm back in Kuwait. She's back in Kuwait, but reorganized? She had a bag of stuff, she's brought back a bag of stuff, she's gonna sit in the apartment and eat it. What's she reorganizing? It and so Well, I wanna see her unload the suitcase that has all of those feminine products and uh, new underwear and lingerie. Um are, are you going to unload that for us and show us that that actually came back to Kuwait and it wasn't intended for somebody else? You going to prove that to us, Chantal? Because, you know, I've met a lot of manipulative people in my lifetime and uh, you said you're buying a second suitcase, so to bring over shit that you could literally buy in any store that is like a grocery store, a drug store, any store in Kuwait, you could have bought that shit. But oh no, you needed to buy it in Canada and do a, a live stream about, not a lot, was it live? Yeah, it was live. It was a live stream about... Oh, look at how clean my coochie's going to be. Why? Why would you do that in Canada? You're not with your husband yet. My husband! Who were you trying to impress with that? Oh, so happy to be home with my husband and pets. Mm. Alright guys, get cozy and enjoy the show. Okay. Oh, oh Buster. I appreciate so much how much this dog can't stand her presence in his life. <laughs> that expression is all of us. <laughs> Look at this underbite. You think I'm going to give you anything? The secret is he doesn't actually have an underbite. He just can't stand her. That's his expression. <laughs> all right. Fine. What do you say? What do you say? Shut well, up and give it to me. Good boy. Oh, you stink. Good boy. Now give him cheese. <laughs> the mom's listening in the background like, whatever it is, don't give it to him. My lunch is cream of broccoli soup. Homemade. Why are you giving him table scraps like that? He's a dog. He should be eating actual dog food. You shouldn't be giving him shit that you don't know whether or not he can digest it. God damn this bitch. I can't. My mom made crackers, cheese, and pickles. Always with the pickles. Mm -hmm. But I share the cheese with this guy because... What? He'll eat your face if you do it. <laughs> She's mostly made of cheese anyway. He's cute. Even though he doesn't like me. He right? really doesn't. She's trying to buy his love too. Just like she tries to buy men's love. Look at him. Can kiss? Absolutely not. So this is a delicious meal that my mom prepared for me one evening. It well for me and my sister basically, but <laughs> mashed potatoes, green beans, butter, an empty plate because I'm starving, and I love my mother's meatloaf. She made. I'm sorry. What's the butter for? Do you have some rolls or something? 
wh why is there just like standing butter just just for the reason of it you just got butter what the fuck even with the way you people eat it's the best meatloaf i swear that's where i learned how to make mine and look gravy moderation when she says moderation she's got an entire measuring jug of gravy for what was it her and her sister <laughs> let's see if she waits that shall we i've got a feeling she didn't i'm going up for sure definitely and yeah i put a cheese mm -hmm. slice and a, like a craft single on it you gotta try it it's a game changer don't knock it till you try it it's basically a burger with <laughs> cheese yeah mm. all right one thing my family does traditionally is play a game called pass the ace and i'm losing i only have two ships left but you basically don't want the ace card you know you want to pass the lowest card what gets me here is my family actually play cards quite a lot and we play a game like this called uh called chase the ace and it's the same kind of idea except uh if you get a king you're kind of immune that's your stop card and you just put it on your forehead that might be a family thing of ours because you get it you go whoop and then no one can swap with you because the king sticks um I, I don't know if it's a game everyone plays but uh yeah chase the ace my family do this too uh around the table and then the dealer gets to cut but guess why i keep losing my we played dictionary we would get a dictionary out and find a very complicated word and have everybody in the room write up a made up definition for that word and then the person who chose the word would have the real definition and uh, there would be score points so everybody would vote on which definition they thought was correct and so you get points if your definition was voted on but also you would score points if you guessed the correct definition that was our family game chips yeah i'll show you i keep getting aces don't worry i'm sure she's got an x on poker face <laughs> yeah nice this is for those who have ever felt like the black sheep there you go she doesn't even seem interested in her own content, does she? I wonder if her family gave her this. Whatever this is. So, I had lunch with my aunt one day, and she... Look at what she made. Look at these fresh veggies. That looks really nice. With all kinds of dips. Spinach dip, hummus, onion dip, cheese. Um, some onion buns that were made with, like, spelt flour. And an amazing salad. Look at the feta cheese and olives. How you much know dressing does she have on that? Sure. All of it is the answer. Give me cheese. <laughs> that dog could not be more unimpressed. Looked up at his name. I was like, why are you bothering me? Not only is the answer no, it's an active rejection. <laughs> Don't come near me. How is this? The very idea displeases him. All right, Canada, you have a crisis. You have an issue with one-legged seagulls. Canada does have a crisis, but it's currently holding the camera. I mean, look at this poor seagull. I've seen so many seagulls with one leg. Sad, sad, sad mesquine. I'm a little shocked she was able to focus on the seagulls as they were attacking her and she was throwing bread buns at them. What's going on, Canada? Do something. Pizza. Cheese. Bear in mind, this is clips with her family. At the moment, it seems like the dog's the only one who will tolerate the camera. And even that is, you know, not something he particularly seems keen on. Pizza. Cheese. Pizza and cheese is literally the two words she knows. It's the only thing in her head. Um, squirrel? Kitty? I don't think so, buddy. Aww. I don't... How can she be so incapable of relating to animals like i mean I, I just i don't get it i grew up around dogs i've taken my lumps for you know invading their space when i was little you know um and i learned you know okay don't do that don't do this but it seems like she didn't learn any lessons throughout life about how to be around animals whatsoever.
think you're one to judge how people treat cats. <laughs> Are you sitting beside me? I don't think you hate me. I think he does. Do you? <laughs> I think he does. Do you? I don't know what led him to go to her, but he looks one second away from wanting to bite her face off. <laughs> well, he didn't go to her. He was sitting across the room and she went to him. Look at him. He's like, get away. Okay, fine. Wash the Okay. Bye bye, Kia. Odds that she did not clean that Kia out before she left. <laughs> Alright, now I'm on the bus to go to the Montreal airport. The bus is so affordable and so easy that I just always take it. Red faced, but ready to go. I was bored waiting in line for 45 minutes, standing there waiting to drop my baggage off. So I thought it was a pretty cool um, idea just to get some shots of the Montreal airport. That was my gate in the 500s there for Qatar Airways. So I was just uh, checking. Okay, two things here. Haven't you already shown us the Montreal airport like several times? And secondly, isn't it pronounced Qatar? Qatar. Isn't it pronounced Qatar? Am I wrong here? Can somebody correct me? And then dropping my baggage. And uh, yeah, it was a pretty big line. So I was just uh, standing there all hot and huffy puffy as I normally do with a good old CPAP here. Mm -hmm. And uh, makeup all over my face like a little child. Yeah. I don't understand how she travels with eyeliner. It's the one thing I don't put on when I'm traveling. <laughs> Not for long time. Got my boarding pass and passport. Someone on Twitter was asking about the fact that it says Mrs. There's a lot of airlines that if you're a female, they'll just put Mrs. on. I've been called Mrs. on my um, flights a lot. Actually, <laughs> last time I was called Mr. for some reason. <laughs> So the point being that it really doesn't matter um, as long as your name matches your... Oh, dude, Trump tried to eliminate somebody's vote um, in, um, was it 2016 or was it 2020? I can't remember. But um, the woman had been voting as Mrs. Such and Such um, her entire life. And um, her husband died. So he tried to use that as an example of somebody who was voting um, illegally under somebody who had died. Right? When this is like an, a, a very elderly lady who used her legal name. It is a legal name. That's a legal name. Mrs. Such and Such, whatever the fucking dude's name was, I can't remember. But that was her legal name. And that is how she registered to vote. And um, Trump tried to come after her as though she was voting under her dead husband's name. He's such a dick, you guys. I sincerely hope that you don't allow that guy another four years. Passport, it's not gonna matter. Like this I keep very close to me. I'm paranoid. I had a lot of time to kill before my flight and I was starving. There was a St. Hubert's at the Montreal airport, but you know what the best thing about the St. Before she tells us the best thing about the St. Hubert's, next time she complains that the cream cheese in a sandwich is causing her stomach to explode right. on a plane, on a busy plane, remember that this is what she has chosen to eat directly before the flight. I actively avoid spicy food and fast food before I get on a plane. Like the day or two before, you just try and eat cleaner so that you're comfortable. And remember that Chantelle finds it very difficult to move on a plane. She's worried about the bathrooms and fitting on a plane. And this is what she's chosen to eat. Like, just say- Well, and more than likely, she's wearing diapers on the plane too, so like, her biggest concern is the fact that she's going to be stinking up the plane. All she's got to do is get to the bathroom and change her diaper. Get yourself up for success, my darling. And this one thing, for the good of the other passengers. Super says, guys, they have a gravy dispenser. It's unlimited gravy. 
What was that she was saying about gravy moderation in the last clip? Right. Finally back in the Middle East. Oh, sorry, sorry. And you cannot tell me, I'm still on the same, like, such a big bill. You cannot tell me that having gone through this airport before, done this trip before, that she hasn't had these meals before getting on a plane. This will not be the first time. And she's only just had the stomach upset on the way to Canada this trip. So she's learned nothing. Look at this fancy little souk kind of shopping area. It's actually quite cute. There's like restaurants and the magic. I'm assuming this is it's Qatar. This is really cool. Or I wherever love. she switched through. The Middle East. Did she switch through in Qatar or Bahrain? I can't remember. Yes, you guys. I can't tell you how much I missed it. And I'm. Yeah, it's Qatar. She's. Uh, she gets most of her transfer flights. Like, she does the long flights into Qatar. And then she does the commuter flight into Kuwait and the commuter flight is fucking empty um, so she gets all the space she needs which is great for her as a big woman but it's also a telltale sign of what's going on in the Middle East like who the fuck wants to be in Kuwait right now you guys I'm so happy to be back here finally last leg Doha to Kuwait oh Doha yeah so she's in Qatar this hormone supplement put women over 50 back in their... We got? we got no footage of the long-haul flight right after she ate that ridiculous meal and where it was likely more busy. Mm. She always goes for the window seat. I feel like she'd be more comfortable on the aisle. So then she would have to move for whoever's sitting next to her. So. Right, and then she could actually spill some of her body into the aisle. I don't understand that either. I, I don't know what sort of weird sort of phobias she has or whatever, especially if she intends to sleep on the flight the majority of the time. That's kind of an asshole move. Like, if you intend to get the window seat, you better fucking keep that window open for the rest of us so we can see out. So the flight from Doha to Kuwait was like an hour, and it was almost an empty flight know how empty that flight was or if she was just filming it early or what because it seems like she's right at the back of the plane and wasn't she right at the back of the plane before i'm presuming she's picking those seats because i guess she's hoping that people don't want to sit at the back of the plane so it will be the last one to fill up but especially with a short haul flight where there's several a day it seems like they wouldn't fly the flight if it were that empty now, there's always exceptions. I've been on very quiet flights before, but in today's aviation business, it's going to cost them more to do this. And when you've got Yeah, but we're talking about the Middle East and they got a bunch of bullshit going on right now. So all of the flight dollars are really precious to them. They're going to take every single dollar they can get. I don't know why she picks the back of the flight. Maybe it's because she's slow walking up the aisle and um, doesn't want the humiliation of holding up the line, right? That could be a thing. I know it's kind of hard for me, you know, having a permanent limp, but I choose as close to the front as possible, even though I've got that limp, because um, I want to get the fuck out of the plane and get to my wheelchair service and get the hell out um, because it that it, that's a much longer walk for me so if she's trying to complain that she has sciatica she has all these problems with her legs and her back and so on and so forth then there's why are you picking the back of the plane Chantel what are you doing several flights going you can just bomb people to the next flight so it's really cool that i had like most of the plane to myself and here we are in doha right now and you gotta pass bahrain and going to kuwait city and there's shiraz iran Yaba said it's going to be 100 degrees in Kuwait today. 
Have fun with that, Chantel. Welcome back home, honey. I miss you a lot. Did he have to practice his lines first? It's a hard the trip. Very long and we're going to talk about it, but I'm just glad to be home. Very long and I'm going to talk about it, but no, no footage. What's the story? Someone in the comments tell me what they think happened on the trip that's going to be such an event. What was she told on the long haul flight? Well, there's going to be a bathroom incident, obviously, right? There's also going to be a small guy that um, spilled some wine on her and, you know, was unhappy with not getting his full seat capacity because she was spilling into it. It's going to be all of the bullshit that we've heard from her before. Right? Or did the uh, burger come back to haunt her? Who could have thought unlimited gravy before a flight could have caused any trouble? Hello, Miss Me too, a lot. So what do you think about the weather here, baby? It's hot. The captain was saying it's 30 degrees. Especially at the night time. Yeah, the day is the 40. No, <laughs> not that no. much. I was going to say, it's not there so yet. It's, it's going to be. We are here getting a cold juice for... Sorry, I tried to pause and it didn't happen. Um, currently in Oman, at least, we're looking at kind of 32, 33 in the day, but it's only going down to about 25, 26 at night. So that's the thing, really. At night, the temperatures don't drop as much as you think they will, and it's going to get worse. But all She's dark and Celsius. She's, she's not translating for us. It's a lot more in Fahrenheit, you guys. The uh, rain that's been going through the region has kind of delayed the major onset of summer, but we are definitely seeing a turn. My love. Yeah. Immediately juice for the diabetes. Great. Uh, lemon mint. Your juice, sweetheart. Oh, Are you from the college? For once. For a change, yeah. <laughs> Alright guys, I hope you enjoyed this quick little vlog. It's all that I can get out of me right now. I'm so tired. So... Really, this is what you had to do on my birthday, for real. My 50th fucking birthday. You didn't even do anything for yourself on your 40th birthday. And you give me this gift? Nice. Alright. I will have more content coming up for you guys. A lot more to come. Something exciting to wait for. Look at the picture of her next to this, uh, next to this writing. Look at it. Who's this? Whose skin is this? Anyway, let's leave it there. Short and I guess not that sweet, but there we are. So Chantal is promising content, is promising stories. I think chances are it's just going to be linked to the fact that she did not book enough space for herself on the plane. And therefore, of course, it was an uncomfortable flight. But we shall see. She is back. I was going to be a bit sad about the fact that she went back to Kuwait, but, I mean, the Canada content wasn't exactly it, was it? Although, if she had serious... Well, there's probably some sort of major layover, too, because it's a 20-hour flight, and she flew into Qatar, right? So, she had to stay there for... Probably seven hours she probably had to just like wander the airport for like seven hours you guys she wanted to stay and have been going through all the things she would need to do to stay in canada i think it would have been a bit more interesting i also think at some point she may end up doing the border hopping she's doing now in a different country um, so she's been talking about Malaysia recently. Yeah. I think maybe they're looking for somewhere cheaper to live than Kuwait, uh, where they can. But they're also, they also have to be considerate of what countries Salah can actually go to because of his Syrian nationality. Um, they might be able to go to Russia. That's possible. That would be scary. But, um, there's limited options for him 
as a Syrian national. She has more options as a Canadian, but um, they're going to have to like do their research on where he can go. Because um, he's on a watch list, basically. Um, go and do the tourist thing for three months and hop in and out the way that she's doing here. But there is the thought then of, I don't know Salah's status, but um, if he leaves Kuwait, does he have the ability to come back in? We're not entirely sure. Like, when this eventually breaks down, what are his options without her? We don't know. Um, his... his uh, motivations have always been a little bit harder at first it was very much romance scam away into canada but she can't provide that so it's something to think about but she put this out the other day so that means her next visa hop will be sometime late in july i guess if i'm doing that right i'll check that math but uh sometime in late july i'm guessing and uh i think we will see we will see another sudden impromptu trip because they love to travel, you guys. And I guess we'll see where that goes. All right, everybody, thank you so much, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Thank you, Milk Tea. Thank you, Milk Tea. I will um, put your link in my video. Um, I haven't covered you in a long time. Um... But, yeah, I'm just like, uh, this was my birthday present, Chantel, my 50th birthday present. You couldn't even do anything for yourself on your 40th. You got nothing for your 40th, and that's what you gave me on my 50th. Okay.